It's funny in the year, this last year that I'm already remaking old YouTube videos. I'm gonna be like the movie industry and just like start remaking all the old YouTube videos. Nothing new, just old remakes. It works for Hollywood. What's going on YouTube? Levi at Old Iron Off-Road here today with another video. First and foremost, I would like to take a minute and thank each and every one of you. We've reached over a thousand subscribers and we are actually in the process of monetizing our channel. And I owe it all to you guys. If it hadn't been for you guys watching and subscribing and all that good stuff, it, we wouldn't be here. So I sincerely thank each and every one of you that take the time to watch these videos and thank you for subscribing. Also, I want to say real quick, if you're watching this video currently, take two seconds, reach over, click the subscribe button, make sure to hit the like button on this video. So what we're going to do today is we're going to dig back into another video that we've already previously made. I've gone back and watched the video. The audio is terrible. The video is informative, I feel. So again, I think it, it deserves to be remade with a little bit better quality and enthusiasm. I'm going to show you guys how to do a wheel bearing replacement on a Dana 44 rear, as well as cover the oil bath conversion on an early style rear axle that has the inner axle seal. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So to get started on this, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pull the axle shaft. The axle shaft is super easy to remove. We're gonna access the four studs that are holding the bearing retainer plate to the axle flange. So we'll go ahead and slide this axle shaft out of the housing and then I'll explain to you exactly what we're doing as far as converting to an oil bath setup. So what it is exactly that we're doing is we are removing this inner seal from inside of this axle tube. What that seal does is it separates the diff fluid from the outer wheel bearing and it makes it so that your wheel bearing needs to be part of a periodic maintenance schedule, meaning that ever so often you need to actually pull this axle shaft out and you need to grease the wheel bearing or you run the risk of running it dry. Sometime in the mid 70s, they decided that they no longer needed that inner axle seal and they would rely on, on diff grease, diff fluid to lube the outer wheel bearing. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna remove this inner axle seal. We're gonna clean out the axle tube because on this style of axle with the inner axle seal, the moisture builds up in the axle tube. I can bet a significant sum of money that there's gonna be some trash in the axle tube. So pretty much what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna replace these outer wheel bearings. I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna remove this axle seal. We're gonna actually pull the carrier out of this diff and we're gonna clean the axle tubes out so that there's no chance of any trash getting washed into our new wheel bearings. So let's pop this seal out so you can get a look at that. That's our inner axle seal. That's what we're getting rid of. Oh yeah. And I'll go ahead and give you a view of the amount of trash that is inside of this axle tube. Now again, a critical step of this process is getting all that trash out of the axle tube. And it is pretty necessary to remove the diff because if you just push that into the axle tube or push it into the center section, you're gonna end up with it in your carrier bearings and you're gonna end up smoking your, your pinion bearings, your carrier bearings. It's not gonna be pretty. So you definitely want to remove the carrier for this process. I've got a little tool, a little wire brush that I've rigged up on a piece of stainless steel rod that we use to get in there, uh, chuck it on a drill. 
and really clean those axle tubes out, flush everything out with brake cleaner. That way you know when you put it back together that everything's nice and clean and happy. All right, so we've already removed the other axle shaft. Next, next part of this puzzle is to remove the carrier. Um, pretty simple, pull these four carrier bolt caps and pop it out. Now, one thing you do wanna make sure that you pay attention to is the orientation of these carrier bearing caps. You don't wanna flip them over and you don't wanna cross them side to side. And another trick too, if you're working on this on the lift so that you don't drop the carrier, is don't fully remove the carrier bearing caps. Back them off and leave a couple of threads engaged. That way when the carrier actually comes out, it will kind of, the caps will kind of catch it instead of letting it fall in the floor or on your toe or somewhere else. Now these carriers aren't always pleasant to remove. Sometimes they're in there and sometimes they are not. So we'll see what this one is to be. All right, so the carrier is removed. You also want to make sure that you don't swap your bearing races. You want to make sure that your braces stay with the correct bearing. You don't want to swap them side to side. Any metal components that wear to each other, you want to make absolute sure that you keep them on their corresponding side. So carrier's out. There's not much left to do, but get to cleaning the axle tubes. Let's jump into that. So here you can see our little tool. <clears throat> Piece of rod, chuck to a drill with the brush on the end of it, pretty simple. Very effective, works nice. And also make sure to have plenty of brake cleaner on hand. So we've managed to get both axle tubes clean. So we're gonna flush all that out really well. We're gonna make sure that this carrier is all cleaned up. Check the carrier bearings, make sure they look all happy. And then we'll show you how to actually replace the wheel bearings on your axle shafts. again I thought I'd take a quick second to show us show you guys the bearing cap markings and again make sure that you don't confuse these two so as you can see here we've got a vertical C this one's kind of faint but you can see after we've removed the diff gasket that that C is very very obvious we're gonna put that guy there. See at the top. But you definitely wanna check and make sure that this is something that you actually can visually find on your bearing caps. You've got a C laying upside down. And then right here, we've got a C laying upside down. So we're gonna align these two guys. Now you can see C, C. C, C. C, oh man, my hair. I know y'all. It's not a man bun. All right, so we know we've got our bearing caps properly oriented. We're gonna lightly zip them down with an impact and torque to spec which is 60 foot pounds. It's funny that I've not had a YouTube well. It's funny in the this last year that I'm already remaking old YouTube videos. I'm gonna be like the movie industry and just like start remaking all the old YouTube videos. Nothing new, just old remakes. 
It works for Hollywood. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and button this install up with a lube blocker diff cover gasket. Uh, the lube blocker, for those of you that do not know, is a reusable diff cover gasket or gas. They make for uh, they make them for transmission fans also. They probably will make them for some other applications. But it is a reusable gasket that is basically a metal base and bonded rubber and also has some uh, some type. Hold on, let's look at the what it says in the old packaging. Full perimeter elastomeric beading, and again, it is reusable. Two things, you wanna make sure that your cover's clean, your diff surface is clean, and that you torque spec. We've already ran these guys down lightly with a, with a 3 8 impact, and we're gonna go back and torque them to 20 foot pound, 25 foot pounds, which is what the manufacturer specs. And also, you're gonna notice that we're gonna go in a crisscross pattern, because that is what they say to do. And just like that, old iron off-road has been, no, I can't do that. Can't do it. And now you can tell all your friends that old iron off-road has been in your rear end. The diff. Don't be dirty. All right, so we've got our axle shaft chucked in the vise here, holding it in place. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this clinch collar which is what retains the bearing onto the axle shaft. Now, a couple of things I want to take note of on this. This is the wrong type bearing. This is a flat roller bearing. Do not use a flat roller bearing on these. There's one bearing and one seal to use on these axles. Only period. I don't care what your brother said. I don't care what your uncle said. I don't care what anybody said. You are to use a set 10 Set 10, Timken Baron, and a 9912, 9912 National Seal. Those are the only two bearing, that's the only bearing and the only seal to use, period. It's a tapered bearing, that's what you want. So first, I'm gonna give you a breakdown of kinda how this works. This is your retainer plate. This bolts to the axle flange, and when everything's bolted up, it pulls this seal into the axle housing and kind of flares it open a little bit. So not only does it seal on the axle shaft, it seals on the OD of the or the ID of the axle tube. And it also gives retention, keeps the axle from going that way. Now the problem, what happens is when this guy wears out, this collar wears out and it either allows the bearing to slide off the collar or everything falls apart enough that the inside hole isn't quite small enough to keep everything in place if there is a bearing failure. Now there are heavy duty retainer plates uh, that are available for purchase with a smaller hole and they're a little thicker. I use them sometimes, <clears throat> a lot of the times I don't. <clears throat> the best method of keeping axles, axle shafts in the axle housing is to know absolutely emphatically when the last time that your bearing was replaced. That's the best thing. And then, you know, from there, routine maintenance, when you're changing your diff fluid or you go to service your front wheel bearings, as you should be doing, yearly, bi-yearly, you should have some kind of a routine maintenance schedule. Best process to keep yourself off the side of the road is routine maintenance. When you're doing your routine maintenance, jack the back of the truck up, shake around on the wheels of the tires, make sure there's no in play, make sure there's no up and down play, just make sure everything still feels nice and snug and everything should live a long, happy life from there. So again, how we're gonna remove these guys is we're going to take a cutoff wheel, a small cutoff wheel on a grinder, and we're gonna put a small cut about halfway through the surface of this collar on an angle. And then we're gonna strike it with a cold chisel and then tension from it being pressed on should actually break it. Now you can drill a hole in it. There's several ways to remove them. This is how I've always done them. I cut them with, with a cutoff wheel. Once we cut that off, we're gonna cut through the cage of this bearing. We're gonna remove it and we're gonna cut through the inner part of the bearing. We're gonna pull it off the same way. 
One thing you have to be very, very careful of is the sealing surface on this axle. The oil bath conversion that we're doing relies heavily on the integrity of the sealing surface of the axle shaft to make sure that you don't end up with a fluid leak after this is done. Because again, you've got two seals on this guy to keep everything back. You've got an inner axle seal and you've got your outer axle seal that all it has to do is keep grease in between there. We're removing that inner axle seal and we're depending on this outer seal to make a good solid seal to keep fluid from leaking because nobody likes leaky axle shaft seals because what ends up happening is you ruin your brakes it's a bad time for everybody so again be super 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 careful when you're cutting this clinch ring and the bearing off itself because if you nick that seal surface you're beat you need a new axle shaft and this one's going to take a little more effort just because this is a flat roller bearing typically the race wouldn't be on there and i would be able to just cut straight through the cage so i'm actually going to have to cut this guy in half first. Now, as mentioned, that took a little more time just because we had to remove that outer portion of that bearing. Typically, the race would stay in the housing had they used a proper bearing. But again, this has been changed out at some point. So from now, from this point on, is kind of more realistic as to what you can expect when you're doing yours, assuming you have the appropriate type of bearing. You can see here that you have a bearing cage. We're gonna have to cut through that, remove it, and then we'll still have the inner portion of the bearing itself. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut through this clinch ring. Now, as you can see, I have not cut completely through this clinch ring. I stopped just shy of actually making contact with the axle shaft and we're cut pretty even depth all the way across. Now you can expect to have to cut this cage now again. Here's the reason why we don't use these tapered roller or these flat roller bearings. It's a plastic cage. Nobody likes plastic bearing stuff. Don't use plastic bearing stuff. And we're gonna slide this seal up out of the way, clean everything off good. Now again, stay away from this sealing surface. And the way we do that is we're gonna come in here and again, we're gonna keep our, our cutoff wheel on a super steep angle that way we're not cutting up and down. If we're cutting up and down through here as the, as the cutoff wheel drops in through there, you're very likely to get into this sealing surface. Same as before, we've cut most of the way through it. Now we're just gonna rely on pressure of the cold chisel to break it and it cracked it. One more, it's cracked. I'm gonna pop that guy off now. Slide the old seal off. Now, at this point, you're gonna wanna inspect the axle shaft ceiling surface because that is important. Make sure there's no grooves, make sure there's no wore out spots, make sure a bearing hadn't got away from somebody on this axle shaft previously. Make sure that where the bearing surface rides is nice and, and, and smooth and everything looks good. And you can opt to replace this guy if you choose at this point. We're not going to, this one's good and straight, it's flat. We're putting new bearings on there, I'm not scared. One thing that you do wanna do if you take this off is make sure that you put it back on because if you pressure seal on your bearing on there and you forgot to put this guy on, guess what? You're beat again, you're cutting your brand new bearing off. So we've got our 9912 seal. We're going to install it. Obviously it's directional. The spring is gonna to go towards the inside, go toward the guts of the diff. We're gonna slide it down over our nice clean axle shaft. And then we're gonna do this. We're gonna put our bearing on. Now I've seen a ton of people talk about heating these up to get them on. I've seen people beat them on with tubing. I've seen people do all kinds of dumb stuff. 
don't do that. It specifically says in the directions, don't do that. You press this and the clinch collar on at the same time. It's a very specific interference fit. Press it on. If your axle shaft's in good state, shape, it's gonna stay. There's no need to heat this up. It says specifically, do not heat this guy up. It says it, don't do it. Don't do it. So one thing we're gonna take note of is the direction of this bearing. This is a tapered bearing. As we mentioned, this is not a straight roller bearing and it does actually have a race. Now these come pre-lubricated with grease that should have enough in there to allow time for uh, diff fluid to actually get to it and begin lubricating the bearing. So what you have to pay attention to is the direction of this bearing. Now we could obviously drop this bearing on this way or we could drop it on this way, but only one way is correct. We wanna make sure that the race is facing inside of the housing. This is the back side of the cage. This is the face of the race. We wanna make sure that the bearing goes into the housing like this. So this little thin cut should be towards our seal, towards the seal. We're gonna slide it down, get it centered and straight. We're gonna open this guy up. It's non-directional. We're gonna drop it on, and then we're gonna walk over to the press and we're gonna press this guy on. We've got our seal slid back up out of the way and you can see that the seat of the bearing is actually seated against the uh, bottom of the axle shaft and you'll feel it when you when you're pressing it on when your press starts to max out and it gets tough you usually get one last clunk out of it and then it lives there all right so insulation of this guy is super straightforward it's literally the reverse process of removal we're gonna take our retaining nuts off that we used to hold the brake stuff where it needed to be, get it out of the way. We're gonna slip this guy down the axle tube till we feel it hit the diff or hit the carrier. Kinda wobble it around until you feel it engage the splines. Pick it up, get the race started in the housing. Put a bump. And we're just gonna start our nuts on the studs. When we tighten these down, we're gonna tighten them down in a crisscross pattern. You don't wanna just go ham on one and pull that, that bearing retainer into place because you can possibly warp it. You wanna kinda do it slowly and evenly and visually look at the bearing retainer plate and make sure that it's not putting any unnecessary pressure on it. If it is putting any weird pressure on it, just give this guy a couple of tech pecks with a hammer to kinda help seat itself. No in play, oh, very nice. And that's that, now all that's left to do is repeat the process with the other side, refill your diff, add any limited slip additive that you may or may not need, depending on whether or not you have a limited slip. And now all that's left to do is motor down the road with your family with peace of mind knowing that you have recently replaced your wheel bearings. They're well bathed in oil, they're not dry, they're gonna run nice and cool, and your axle shaft and wheel and tire is not gonna exit the vehicle while you're driving it, which is always a good thing. So I think that about wraps it up today. As always, I appreciate you folks at home that take the time out of your day to watch our videos. I hope you found this informative and helpful. Please like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications to be notified when new videos are uploaded. And as always, enjoy.